Today we are going to talk about the eight species of bears that are currently alive. To do some housekeeping at the start, we won't be talking about the red panda because DNA testing has shown that it's not closely related to the giant panda or other bears. It is actually in the clade Mustaloideae, which means that it is more related to badgers and raccoons. The red panda is to the raccoon, what the Dale Earnhardt Jr. edition is to the 2004 Monte Carlo. We also won't be talking about the koala because it is also not a bear. It is a marsupial and it has a pouch where it raises its young. Koala also has a brain smoother than a Brazilian booty and is thought to be the dumbest mammal pound for pound. We also won't be talking about West Hollywood bears because they're just big boys that want love. We're about to get started, but before I do, I'm going to do the YouTuber thing and tell you to stay tuned in the video because later on I'm going to tell you which bears have the largest and smallest gentle bear sausages. Oh my fellow Americans! We are going to start off with the American black bear. They live in Canada, Mexico, and America, hence the name. They are the bear with the largest population. It is believed that there are over 500,000 of them. They are actually a little on the large side for a bear, although small compared to the other North American bears. Usually they top out around 550 pounds, but somewhere in the 200s is more common. There are several subspecies of these bears. It's mostly just little differences in colors and size. The size differences are possibly due to an interesting little rule in biology called Bergman's Rule. This rule basically states that when animals have a large range in which they live, the populations in colder climates tend to have larger individuals than the populations in warmer climates. There are exceptions to this rule, but it does work for our friend the American black bear. One of the more interesting things about these bears is that despite being called black bears, they come in a wide range of colors. The ones on the east coast are almost always black, but as you go west, there's more and more variety in the colors to the point that at Yosemite Park, only about 9% of the bears are black. They can be white either from being albino or just having white fur while still retaining the pigment in their eyes and skin, the second of which is most common in British Columbia where they are sometimes called kermode bears or spirit bears. In British Columbia, the percentage of the black bear population that is white is believed to be about 10%. In Alaska and northern British Columbia, they also have what are called glacier bears, that they are these really pretty grayish blue bears. Their colors also range from the familiar jet black to a blonde color to a cinnamon color to a light brown and all the way to a dark chocolatey brown like this little shit who's gonna get his ass beat if he keeps taking the trash out of the dumpster and putting it in my yard. The American black bear mostly eats plants, bugs, carrying trash. Their love of trash and dead stuff is why the play dead when you see a bear thing is not taught in places that only have black bears. With black bears, if you see one, you're supposed to yell at it and look big and try and look scary, or if you're currently being attacked by one while watching this video, try to fight it. The goal is to make it seem like you are too much trouble to eat. Most black bear attacks in North America are bears that have something wrong with them, or are too familiar with humans because they are being fed by dumbasses. Most of the attacks do not end up in death, though. The American black bear is listed as least concerned for conservation, aside from the glacier bear subspecies, which is threatened, as is the bear in my yard who has been threatened by me several times. Next up we got the Asian black bear. These bears have a range from Iran to Southeast Asia to the east coast of Russia and now over the sea to Japan and Taiwan. The easiest way to tell an Asian black bear from an American black bear is that the Asian black bear has long rough on the side of its face. That kind of makes it look like Otto Man from The Simpsons. Asian black bears usually top out around 310 pounds and they also mostly eat plants, garbage, and bugs. There are seven subspecies of these guys with mostly just size and fur thickness differences depending on their environment. There is the Baluchistan bear, which today you get to find out that Baluchistan is the area where Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan meet. There is the Formosan black bear in Taiwan. There's the Japanese black bear, there's the Himalayan black bear, there's the Indochina black bear, there's the Tibetan black bear, and there's the Asuri black bear, which lives up in Korea in eastern Russia. By the way, if you ever look up the Siberian Federal District on a map, it looks very excited. These bears are one of the species that has the most run-ins with humans, and they are also known to be good climbers and spend up to half of their time in trees. These bears are mostly listed as vulnerable, except for the Baluchistan bear, which is listed as critically endangered. These bears are losing numbers because of a few reasons, one being that they are losing their habitat, and secondly because the bears are often captured in the wild and then kept in tiny cages that keep them from moving while they have a tube implanted in their gallbladder to siphon out the bile they produce so it can be used in traditional medicine. Despite the internet rumors, the sun bear is in fact a bear and not a man in a suit. If you want to hear a better theory about people and animals, who's check out my cryptid video. The sun bear is the smallest bear species, topping out at around 145 pounds, or about the same size as Floyd Mayweather, who also shares a reading comprehension level with it. Sun bears live in Southeast Asia, which leads to a couple interesting differences from their relatives. Because the areas where they live are always warm, sun bears do not hibernate and they breed throughout the year instead of having a set season. They mostly eat plants and bugs and occasionally they might get a lizard. Their bug eating is one of the main reasons for one of their most famous attributes, their tongue which can reach 10 inches long. They also have very girthy canines that help them peel the bark off of trees to find bugs. These bears are sometimes eaten by tigers, leopards, and a very fun animal I just learned about called the dole, which hunts in packs and kind of looks like a cross between a fox and a wolf. These bears 
bears like to be in trees more than any other bear. They climb up there to find food and to sunbathe. They are a little odd in some other ways. For one, they are possibly the smartest bear. They have solved puzzles in zoos to get food, and they are very good at mimicking facial expressions. They often stand on their hind legs to get a good look at things, partially due to how dense the vegetation is in their habitat. Also, they are small, so it's easier for them to support themselves than some other bears. Sun bears are considered vulnerable. There may be fewer than a thousand left in the wild due to habitat loss and their use in traditional medicine. <laughs> The sloth bear is native to Sri Lanka and India, and sometimes India's neighbors like Nepal because bears do not care about geopolitical borders. Their size usually tops out around 320 pounds. This bear is also called the labiated bear because it has a bit of an underbite which helps it slurp up bugs. Bit of a yay old man, you might say. They mostly eat bugs, fruit, and carrion. This is the bear that commits the most attacks on humans, partially because they live in such a populated place. Apparently, these bears also have a tendency to not really kill their victim, but instead to suck and gnaw on people's limbs till they look like the stuff they make chicken nuggets out of. A lot of the attacks are thought to be out of fear or surprise. Ironically, sloth bears aren't great climbers, so they are more stand and fight than a lot of other bears. In the past, sloth bears were often kept as pets and trained as dancing bears to do street performances. The street bears were often treated poorly, having had teeth removed and fitted with a nose ring that was used to leash them. This was banned in 1972, and supposedly there are no more dancing bears in India today. They are considered a vulnerable species today, with somewhere around 20,000 left in the wild. They face habitat loss, being killed by farmers, and being used in traditional medicine. <laughs> The spectacled bear lives in the northwest part of South America, mostly in the Andes in what are called cloud forests, which are wet forests up in the mountains. They are also sometimes seen in the lower, dry lowlands. They are the only bear native to South America, and they top out around 440 pounds. This actually makes it the largest native land animal in South America that is not a tapir. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, Pablo Escobar's hippos are bigger, well, those aren't native animals, so be quiet. The spectacled bear is also believed to be the closest living relative to the short-faced bears, which were the largest bears to ever live. Based on the fossils of them, we think they probably got Got over 4,000 pounds. These short-faced bears are believed to have gone extinct when the other megafauna died out, which made it harder for them to get enough food. If you are unfamiliar with megafauna, the Americas had some insane wildlife thousands of years ago that died out due to weather changes and humans coming over the land bridge. The megafauna included things that you've definitely heard of, like mammoths or the Smilodon, which was the saber-toothed tiger, and some things you might not have heard of, like the giant armadillo called the Glyptotherium. There were also beavers that were over six feet long, and there was the giant sloth. The spectacled bear is called that because of the markings on its face. The markings also kind of remind me of hentai common. These bears tend to be very shy. They usually climb up trees as soon as they see a human. They eat mostly plants. Possibly more than 90% of their diet is plant-based. Everything from fruits and palms in the cloud forest to cactus in the scrublands. They do sometimes prey on cattle and crops, which leads to their human issues. They are considered a vulnerable species. There's probably about six to 10,000 of them left in the wild, and their main issue is habitat loss and run-ins with people. The brown bear is kind of a mess to talk about. Apparently there is no real consensus on how many subspecies of brown bear there are, partially due to it having a huge range that takes up a significant percentage of the northern hemisphere. This means that you have to get people from a lot of different countries to agree on something. The amount of subspecies is definitely in the double digits though. Brown bears are omnivorous and will eat pretty much anything they can get their big old brown paws on. As you know if you've ever watched a nature documentary, they like to eat fish, they're also down for plants, bugs, rodents, and larger animals that have something wrong with them that makes them easier to catch. Here in North America it is most widely believed that we have two subspecies that are still alive. Those two subspecies are the North American brown bear, aka the grizzly, and the Kodiak. The biggest difference between these two bears is their bigness. Generally, mainland grizzly bears top out at around 800 pounds, while the bears that live on Kodiak Island will often grow to over 1,000 pounds. One particular Kodiak named Clyde that lived in the zoo in Bismarck, North Dakota, is believed to have at one point been 2,400 pounds and had a 9-inch fat layer at the time of his death. He was a true American hero. The other big difference between the two is that Kodiaks love pit bull. North America also used to have the Mexican grizzly bear and the California grizzly bear, which the California grizzly bear is on the state flag of California. The Mexican grizzly is believed to have died out in the 60s, and the California is believed to have died out in the 20s. The various brown bear subspecies differ mostly in color, size, and various behavior changes due to environment. The colors on the different brown bear subspecies range from the Tibetan blue bear, who's almost like a gunmetal blue, to the beautiful Syrian brown bear, which looks like Guy Fieri's tips. Speaking of tips, the Syrian bear is also the only bear with white claws. In another deserty location, we have the Gobi bear, which is the smallest brown bear subspecies. It tops out at around 300 pounds. Because of their size and where they live, they are another low-protein bear, with animals making up less than 10% of their diet. In addition to being soy boys, the Gobi bear is also inbred to the point where their DNA has a low number of alleles causing reproductive issues. The most common brown bear subspecies is the Eurasian brown bear. It is believed that there are more than 200,000 of them in the wild. They are kind of in the middle on size, they are kind of a normal brown color, and they attack very few people. They in fact may be 
the average bear. Any older European fairy tale or story that mentions a bear is most likely to be talking about one of these. They were at one time even more widespread, but have seen population declines, including being wiped out in places like England, where they were all stabbed to death 1,500 to 3,000 years ago. An amazing fact I found is that in the last 100 years, there have only been two bear attack deaths in Scandinavia, which is as much as the US has in one year. On the other hand, the Asuri brown bear loves throwing paws with humans. These bears live in Japan, Korea, Eastern Russia, and Manchuria. In Hokkaido, which is about the size of Maine, there have been over 150 Asuri brown bear attacks since the 60s. The attack rate is actually believed to be increasing because their numbers are rebounding while the human population in the area is decreasing, causing them to feel more comfortable being near settlements. These guys are also one of the darkest brown bears and are quite large. They are believed to be the ancestor of America's grizzlies. Brown bears as a whole are labeled as least concerned for conservation since there are believed to be over 200,000 of them in the wild, although some subspecies are considered threatened and are protected such as the Gobi bear. That's right, it's time for the Oreo of bears, the giant panda. Pandas top out at about 350 pounds. They do have some major differences from other bears. Firstly, their diet is almost entirely plant-based. As much as 90% of their diet is bamboo, although they do sometimes eat other grasses and shoots and occasionally bugs or other small animals if they find a dead one. Fun fact, as people spend more time studying the diets of animals, it seems like there might not be any true obligate herbivores. Grazing animals are often seen eating a bug or a dead mouse or something like that if they find it, and big ocean filter feeders have been seen to grab small fish or krill. Because of their diet, pandas have two unique adaptations to help with the bamboo. One is they have bigger molars and a stronger jaw than other bears to help crunch the bamboo, and the other is that they have thumbs. Another interesting adaptation is that they have the smallest bear penises. You thought I forgot about it, didn't you? This sounds like a messed up joke, but it's actually the truth. I can actually give you a visual depiction of this without getting too weird thanks to the wonder that is the baculum. You may be wondering what is a baculum? Well, many mammals actually have a bone in their penis and it is called the baculum. Here's a chart showing the different baculums of bears. The little thing in the top right that looks like a seashell is actually the panda baculum. The big one at the bottom belongs to extinct species and the next two biggest are polar and brown. There are actually two subspecies of giant panda. One is the normal one that you think of. It mostly lives in Szechuan. Then there is the Kindling Panda, which has the same pattern as the normal panda, but it is brown where the other panda has black. The panda is a conservation success story. Recently, it was upgraded to threatened from endangered. There may have been less than a thousand wild pandas at one point, largely due to habitat loss and poaching, and now it might have as high as 3,000 in the wild, as well as a few hundred in captivity. This is the Polar Express. The polar bear is the largest living bear, as well as the largest living carnivore in the world. These frozen fellows top out at about 1,700 pounds. A little fun characteristic of them is that they have black skin under their fur, and their outer fur is built in such a way that it scatters light down under the under fur and onto the black skin to help keep them warm. Polar bears are also dichromatic, which means that they only have two kinds of cone cells in their eyes as opposed to the three kinds we have. That means that they cannot see the color red, which also means that the Coca-Cola advertising team engaged in buffoonery when they chose it as a mascot. The polar bear lives in much of the Arctic Circle, although not in Scandinavia because lutefisk freaks them out. Surprisingly, considering their environment, polar bears only hibernate when they're pregnant. Another interesting fact about them, though, is that polar bears usually have enough fat on them to go a few months without eating. Out of all the bears, they have by far the most meat-heavy diet. If they find some seaweed or something, they might try it out, but otherwise they just go with meat. Seals are their most common prey. They usually try to catch them when they're on the ice, but sometimes they do try to catch them in the water. Another food source for them is that after walruses follow the teaches of peaches and have sex on the beaches, the polar bears will run up on the walruses and get them to stampede so that they crush their children in their panic, giving the bear a wonderful snack. They are also known to hunt land animals like caribou, and occasionally they'll try to get small whales like beluga and narwhal when they get stuck in the shallows. Some polar bears have also started eating more trash because they're stuck on the land more often with the ice melting. Polar bears are considered to be a vulnerable species. There's probably about 30,000 of them left in the wild, and their main threat is that the ice they prefer to hunt from is melting. Besides hunting difficulties, this is adding an extra layer to them, which is they're encountering humans more, and if they're going towns a lot, they might be killed as a nuisance bear. Well, that's all I have for you. Have a good day and eat something good.